great time of worship, you guys. Well done. And I am so glad that you joined us here today because we have returned to our African savanna today for our last week in our safari through Acts. And so let's check in with Pauline and Barney and see. Barney! Barney! I don't know where he could have gone. Barney! Oh! <laughs> Welcome back, explorers. I'm Pauline, and somewhere around here is my faithful assistant and safari guide in training, Barney. Although I can't seem to find him anywhere this morning. I hope he turns up before we leave base camp. I know he wanted to say goodbye. This is our last visit with you, and I want to say how much I've enjoyed these past few weeks with you. It has been my privilege to be your safari guide and to show you God's amazing creation. I think it's meant a lot to Barney, too. Where could he have gone? Barney! Barney! I just don't know where he's gone. Well, while we wait for Barney to turn up, I have one more amazing animal to show you. We shot this footage just the other day and I can't wait to share it with you. It's the elephant! Did you know that the elephant is the largest animal walking on earth? Elephants use their trunks for drinking water, picking up leaves and grass to eat, and for feeling things to see how big or small they are. When elephants go swimming, they can even use their trunks to breathe through like a snorkel. Isn't that amazing? I wish I could find that Barney. I just don't know where he could have gone. Barney! Barney? Here I am, Pauline. I'm right here. Hi, I'm over here. That Barney. <sighs> where have you been? What were you doing in those bushes? Sorry, I was looking for the cook's puppy. He kind of ran away when we were playing ball. I thought you were afraid of that vicious animal. Vicious animal? Who could say that about Mr. Snuggles? He wouldn't hurt a fly. Me, afraid, never. <laughs> well, you said he ran away. Did you find him? I did, and I found something even better. What could be better than finding Mr. Snuggles? Well, when I was searching the tree line, I found a bunch of more tourists who wanted to learn about African wildlife. Oh, well, do you want me to come over and share with them all that I know? That won't be necessary. I started telling them about our safari that we're on right now, and before I knew it, I was telling them about the giraffe and its purple tongue, and how the lioness hunt, and how the hippopotamuses is, and how they run really fast. I even told them about the meerkats and all the dung beetles and stuff like that. That is wonderful, Barney. I'm really proud of you. Thank you so much, Pauline. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. Thank you so much for teaching me all about God's creations. Barney? I think you just graduated from safari guide in training to official safari guide. Novice ranking. Novice ranking? Is that good? Oh, yes. Why don't you say goodbye to the kids and I'll get your novice safari guide badge and we'll put it on together. Okay. Bye, kids. Thanks for an amazing adventure. Ooh. Novice ranking. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy! <laughs> well, kids, that's all from base camp. It has been a real joy showing you the many wonders of God's wild kingdom here in Africa. For myself and for my good friend Barney here, we wish, wish you, all you beautiful sunsets, successful safaris, and a, and a life, life of grand adventures. My name is Miss Carrie. I am excited to be here. Now today, and for the past few weeks, we've been hearing about a very important man whose story is in the New Testament. Do you remember his name? Paul. Yes, it was Paul. And because of the power of the Holy Spirit in Paul's life, the entire world was changed. Like, the whole world. Let me tell you why. Paul did two very important things to spread the good news of Jesus. Number one, can you show me one finger? 
he started new churches. Okay, number one, started new churches. Number two, show me two fingers. He wrote letters to people. How does that change the world? Let's jump in and see. First, we'll start with starting churches. So Paul spent much of his life traveling around and visiting people and telling them about Jesus. One time, Paul went to a town called Philippi, and he met a lady named Lydia there. Lydia was a very important person in this town. She had a business selling purple cloth, which was very fancy. And because she was selling fancy cloth, and she was very important, she knew lots of other very important people. The other thing you need to know about Lydia is that she loved God. But she didn't really know about Jesus. So can you guess what Paul did? He told her about Jesus. Of course, that's what he did. He told Lydia how Jesus lived and the things he taught. He told Lydia that Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins. And then Jesus came back and rose again so that we can have life with God. Well, Lydia was so happy to hear all about this, all this good news about Jesus, and she believed in him right then and there, and she even wanted to be baptized in the river. And now remember, I said she knew lots of important people. She told those people what she learned about Jesus, and her family, and her friends, and her community, they believed in Jesus too. And guess what? A group of people who believes in Jesus, you got a church. They started a new church. Well, later in the book of Acts, Paul and a man named Barnabas were traveling around together, preaching the good news. And one day, Paul and Barnabas were sailing to the island of Cyprus. Okay, that's the area where they were going. And when they got there, they started telling people there the good news that Jesus is alive. But there was also a bad magician guy there, and he twisted the truth into lies and he just caused a lot of trouble. So one day, Paul prayed, and God made the magician blind. What? When the people in Cyprus saw the power of God make this bad guy blind, they believed in him, they believed in Jesus, and another new church was started. Well, another time, Paul and Barnabas were traveling somewhere else, and they ended up in a city called Lystra. There, they met a man who couldn't walk. And Paul asked the man, do you believe that Jesus loves you? The man said, yeah, yeah, I do. And so Paul said, well, get up and walk. And guess what happened? The man got up and walked. Amazing. Well, when the people saw that Paul made the man walk, they thought that he and Barnabas were gods, and they tried to worship them. Isn't that ridiculous? Paul explained, no, 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 we're not the gods. But there is a real God, a real God who loves you very much and who sent Jesus to die for your sins. Well, the people there believed, and guess what started? Another church. That is a lot of traveling and starting new churches. Good work, Paul and Barnabas. So that was the first thing that Paul did, right? He started churches. But there was something else that Paul did to spread the good news. What was it? Oh, yeah! He wrote letters. Let's hear about that now. The second thing Paul did to spread the good news about Jesus was write letters. Now, you have to remember, back when Paul was living, thousands of years ago, people didn't have computers or phones. So if you wanted to talk to someone or you wanted to tell someone something, you either had to walk to go see them, you had to travel to go see them, or you could write them a letter and send it with a messenger. Well, we heard already that Paul traveled around and visited people and visited towns. Well, when he wasn't traveling, he was writing letters to them. He would write to see how they're doing and to tell them that he was praying for them. He wrote to remind them that God loved them and to remind them about things that they should be doing or not doing if they wanted to follow God. And sometimes he wrote to tell them more about God and about Jesus. Now, guess what happened? These letters became part of the Bible. Isn't that wild? And you can find some of these books that Paul wrote in the New Testament. Have you ever heard of Romans? That was a letter to people in Rome. Or the book of Corinthians, which was a letter to the people in Corinth. 
Or what about Philippians? Sound familiar? Like Philippi, right? Where Lydia was? Well, these letters were so helpful to the people that the people in the early churches, they saved them and they passed them on. And so even now, thousands of years later, when we read those letters turned into books of the Bible, we're reading what Paul wrote. Isn't that amazing? Talk about changing the world. Now, Paul's work, all of this, was so impressive, but he didn't do it all on his own, right? Sometimes he traveled with people and had help, but he also had a helper from God. Can you guess who the helper from God was? Does that sound familiar? Of course, it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes from Jesus, and it's a helper for all of his followers. The Holy Spirit can give us power and courage to follow him, and the Holy Spirit can help us share this good news. And that, my friends, brings us to our big idea for today. Can you read this with me? The Holy Spirit gives us power to share the good news of Jesus. Let's read that one more time. The Holy Spirit gives us power to share the good news of Jesus. Nice work. The Holy Spirit is an amazing gift, and we've learned so much about him through this safari, right? And the Holy Spirit is a gift for every person who wants to follow Jesus. That means Paul, way back then, and even us now. So I hope you've learned a lot about the ways the Holy Spirit can help you and me and all of us live lives that follow Jesus. I told you guys, Paul changed the world and he changed it by starting churches and writing letters and all of that made a huge difference in the world for God. So let's look at our Bible verse one more time because it really sums up everything that Paul did. All right, so we're gonna do the hand motions and you're gonna do them with me. All right, so we're gonna stand up and you open your hands like this. Acts 1.8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. Good job. All right, guys, Paul had the power from the Holy Spirit and he told people all over the world about Jesus. And you know what? We can do the same thing because we also have the Holy Spirit. So let's pray about everything that we have learned today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have given us the power to tell people about you. I pray that we would use that power to be courageous and show people and tell people how much you love them and that we can change the world through the power of the Holy Spirit, God, and for you. Um, we thank you for your blessings and we love you. For it's your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us on our safari through Acts. It's been so great to learn about animals and about the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus. Thank you for coming, and we will see you again next week. Bye, guys. Bye.